robotic surgery is performed uh, in uh, usually in lateral position of the kidneys, not a full lateral, a semi-lateral position. And uh, a robot is used uh, to dock on the kidneys. Some ports are positioned in the patient's abdomen. Uh, and through these ports, the robotic arms are docked and the instruments are passed. And then the surgeon works the robot through a console and the surgeon's assistant is on the side of the patient and there is a port, one or two ports for the assistant to use. Um, the robot does not do the surgery. The robot uh, works on a master-slave uh, principle. Uh, the master is the surgeon operating at the console and the robot is the slave. So the robot does exactly what the surgeon wants it to do. How the robot helps the surgeon is firstly, it's vision. It enables the surgeon to have a much higher degree of vision uh, because the robotic camera is a 3D camera. So it's a 3D immersive vision. You can take the camera very close to the tissue so you can see much more clearly and the vision is uh, much more magnified. Therefore, it helps us to see exact tissue planes, all structures very clearly. Uh, and therefore, uh, the operation uh, improves by precision. Also, uh, the wristed movement of the robotic instruments, uh, the robotic wristed uh, movements uh, are much more enhanced than uh, human wristed movements. Uh, therefore, we have more freedom of movement. So there is improved ergonomics. Ergonomics are very important in any surgery. So higher you can improve the ergonomics, better is surgical precision and better is surgical performance. And therefore, we can do far more uh, efficient surgery on the patient uh, and thereby treat the condition more effectively. Kidneys are not the only organ uh, which can be operated by a robot. Uh, robot. Robotic surgery or robotic assisted surgery, uh, to be precise, can be used in any organ, all organs. Uh, it is currently used in uh, general surgery, in uh, cardiothoracic surgery, in uh, urology, gynecological surgery, everywhere. Uh, in urology, we use it on kidneys, prostates and bladders. In kidneys, uh, it offers a big advantage as in other organs as well. The advantages are universal. As I had said before, it offers the surgeon a much higher precision of vision and movement and thereby enabling them to do uh, what is best for the patient uh, and the most uh, necessary to treat the disease, particularly in demanding situations. If you can see better, you can perform better. Uh, if you can move your hands with more degree of freedom, you can perform better. Therefore, it is better for all organs. Um, uh, the, for kidneys in particular, uh, we use it for mainly for partial nephrectomies, but we have started using it for even radical nephrectomies and nephroureterectomies, and the outcome is better because again, precision of movement, vision is far better. And therefore we can do what exactly we want to do. And there is no limitation. The only, perhaps the only limitation is haptic feedback. So you don't get haptic feedback much with robotic surgery as you do for open surgery. Uh, but compared to laparoscopic surgery, the haptic feedback is less, but the vision is more and degree of movement, degree of freedom is much more 
Therefore, overall robotic surgery has an advantage uh, over other forms of surgery in any kidney disease, benign or malignant. There is no ideal candidate. I mean, it is good for any surgery, but more complex the surgery, better it is for robotic surgery. For example, if you want to uh, remove a tumor from the kidney and save the kidney, you need high precision and therefore robotic surgery would be ideal for that. If you want to reconstruct a kidney, uh, again, you need high precision with suturing and dissecting, therefore robotic surgery will be better. If you want to achieve a dissection uh, to remove a kidney in a plane that is difficult to achieve normally because of an advanced nature of disease, again, uh, you need more, uh, you need better vision and more precision of movement. Uh, and therefore, uh, again, robotic surgery helps there. So uh, any uh, demanding operation, uh, robotic surgery is better. The risks are same as any other surgery. Um, the risks are inherent to the condition and the anatomy. So risks of bleeding, bowel injury. Uh, perhaps they're less with robotic surgery because you have more vision and more control. Um, there is one small risk if your team is not adequately trained, if you don't have a good assistant um, because you are away from the patient. If you have a catastrophic situation, you need to have a proper understanding with your team how you control that. You need to have an emergency protocol by which the situation is controlled for a few minutes, which gives you the chance to get scrubbed from the console and be on the patient. So that is a small amount of risk but can be easily mitigated by a properly trained team and a well understood and well followed uh, protocol for emergency situations. The recovery time, as you know, is much faster uh, uh, with minimally invasive surgery than open surgery. Uh, recovery times probably same as uh, in robotic surgery as a well-conducted laparoscopic surgery. Uh, it's just uh, we get more surgical advantage with precision of vision and movement with robotic surgery compared to laparoscopic surgery. So minimally invasive surgery, laparoscopic or robotic, has a huge advantage in achieving physiological uh, uh, environment in a patient. And therefore the recovery is much faster uh, compared to open surgery. Pain is much less, bleeding is less, hospital stay is less, earlier convalescence, patient can get back to normal life quicker. Um, also, because robotic surgery involves higher precision and better vision, we can perform robotic surgery under low pressure pneumoperitoneum. Now, let me explain what pneumoperitoneum is. In order to perform surgery inside an abdomen, you need to inflate the abdomen with gas, which is normally used as carbon dioxide. And with that, we achieve the space in which your instruments can move, your camera can move, you can see the structures and do the needful. Now, previously used pressures of carbon dioxide in sufflation used to be around 10, 15, or even higher millimeters of mercury. This causes pressure in the abdomen and pressure on the blood vessels, particularly small blood vessels uh, feeding the mesentery, the intestines and other structures. And there is a relative uh, small amount of uh, pressure on these blood vessels causing less blood flow. And therefore there is a dysfunction uh, post-operatively and time to recover. Uh, this is lowered in robotic surgery uh, more compared to laparoscopic surgery now because we use low pressure pneumoperitoneum. 
precision of vision and movements allow us to use low pressure pneumoperitoneum. So we can use low pressure up to five millimeters of mercury in, in complex procedures. Uh, which does not impede blood supply to organs. And therefore the recovery is much, much faster. 